Is AM radio dead? I've been staying at my dad's house recovering from surgery, and he was the chief engineer of the biggest AM station in St. Louis, the 50,000 watt KMOX. Radio is a hot topic around here, and I wanted him to answer that question since he and I are planning to go to tour an AM radio tower later this year. In November, the FCC commissioner defended AM radio. He said it was the backbone of the emergency alert system in the US, and it keeps millions of farmers in sync with the rest of the world. He said we need to preserve it. On the other hand, you have Tesla. None of their cars include an AM radio dial at all. And Tesla's not alone. It seems like most of the auto manufacturers are ditching AM when they build their EVs because their engineers can't be bothered because the electric motors create interference with the AM receivers. And that brings us to today. My dad has the radio I gave him last year. This thing is a retro Nixie tube clock and radio, except if you switch it over to the AM dial, well, just listen. So back to the question I asked at the beginning of the video, is AM radio dead? No, but it is suffering. And uh, it's suffering from everything from LED lighting, TVs that are made. It's suffering from an abundance of AM signals all over the place. It's suffering from its audio quality compared to FM and every other service that's come along. And, uh, and it's uh, suffering from the revenue loss. You know, the average AM station probably has less listeners except for the big ones like St. Louis KMOX, you got KDK and and WBZ and all these other states around the country that do it very well. But the loss of revenue of what was has made it hard to maintain. There are expensive sites to maintain. FM radio doesn't seem to tend to suffer from those problems and obviously internet radio doesn't. So what is it, what is different with AM radio that makes it so susceptible to that kind of interference? Uh, the, the easiest way is it's uh, the receiver is looking at the amplitude all the time. That's how it's being decoded. What you're hearing is the amplitude changes being decoded by the receiver so for you to hear them. Well, lightning is an amplitude change. All the lightning energy and the frequency that's being received at, at the receiver is is amplitude change. On the FM side, it's looking for the frequency to change and it's using that. So even though the, the levels might be changing, it's decoding the frequency changes which are different than the amplitude changes that AM has to deal with. So AM, if I'm near something uh, with an AM radio that puts out energy, any kind of energy in that frequency range, which uh, like KMOX 1120 is 1 1.1 megahertz, right? And I can't tell you how many computing devices liked one megahertz for one of their chips inside or whatever, but any energy like that floating around in the air is decoded as if it were an AM station. So on the FM side, it would be decoded as nothing except noise uh, because it would be looking for uh, intelligence on the frequency changing as opposed to just raw amplitude changes at that frequency. What you're saying, it, the Spark app was basically like just generating tons of noise and yeah. you could decode that noise by seeing, oh, there's lots of noise. Yeah, well, and to tell you more on that, when I went to KMOX, there were reports of people's toilets pl playing KMOX and other things, but it, the movement that can be caused, so an, an arc causes movements in energy, and then, of course, you've got fields being created with a lot of energy. Anything that directly tunes in, happens to tune in an AM frequency on one of its wavelengths or quarter wave, half wave, you know, eighth wave, when it tunes it in and, and with enough energy, it will create that little bit of a gap of uh, energy and cause vibrations. It can, you know, a coil can vibrate and you'll actually hear the station. It won't be great, but you will hear the station uh, on that coil. We could, we probably will see that at a station tour. <laughs> what are some good reasons to keep AM radio around? Why, why are there still stations on it today? Why would want, someone want to preserve it? Well, the number one, I think, cool factor of AM, and there aren't a whole lot of stations that, uh, uh, get to participate uh, in this in a wide way. The, the, it's the carry of the signal at night. Uh, we, at, uh, for instance, KMOX St. Louis baseball Cardinal fans, we, we had fans in cities, you know, people go to Washington to live as they were congressmen or something and they would tune into Cardinal games at night. People retire to Florida, uh, people move to Texas and so forth and they could, you know, come that uh, 8.30 time at night and could catch the last end of the Cardinal game on KMOX. That's the number one thing and because of their history, uh, they were built with infrastructure. A lot of the big ones uh, were built with infrastructure for the emergency uh, system. You know, they have generators and, and 
uh, EMP proof buildings for spare transmitters and all kinds of things. So there's quite an investment in that kind of thing in the big AMs. As far as the smaller AM goes, you know, once they're built, the hassles of maintenance is they're on acres of land. Usually they have multiple towers that you have to maintain and that's the real cost, but a well-built site, uh, you know, they, they stay with just tweaks and tuning and cleaning and cutting of grass, trimming of bushes for quite a while. Getting back to uh, the Retio that I mentioned earlier, when I gave it to you in, in the video last year, uh, we turned it on and we noticed like Bluetooth sounded great, but the radio did not sound quite as good. It seemed yeah. like for FM it was overmodulated, but the AM signal wasn't amazing. Yeah. Well, the, the fact is that it was receiving a lot of the stations, even the AMs, but the audio quality was not very good at all. And uh, it, it, it's, I think it's the decoding, the way they uh, modulate uh, their audio to get it to the speaker. And uh, you'd have to refer to the exact, he, he gave us the type of uh, modulation, uh, you know, speaker modulation they were doing in the amplifier. It's, it's not that good. And I think also there's a place somewhere where it's overdriven. Uh, either you know coming right out of the uh, receive chip and, and that brings you to the point right that uh, if if the guy's building this box and it's retro and it's cool and it does great for Bluetooth and the, but then to throw the radio in there and it's like eh, and there's the radio you know and they have a version of this that comes with the HD chip and they may have they may have it's not HD it says DAB on the motherboard so I assume it's more for European or they may have focused on that too but you know by at the bottom of the pile for many years now AM radio has been sitting like Put the radio in, put the chips in. Oh yeah, a AM activated. So AM has been getting like narrow banded for decades on a, so it won't sound even as good as it could. Uh, even with HD radio, if you're an AM station, HD radio, most people were squeezing down to five kilohertz audio bandwidth, which all of you audio guys know that's not very much. That's like a, not much better than a phone call. So AM has been hurt by uh, by that also, that the, the designers of radios are not emphasizing it and then you've got companies like Tesla who it's just a hassle to make an AM radio work in their car because of all the other circuitry they've got they probably interfere with it I have no confirmation of that but I know that it was a shock to see a car come out without an AM radio whatever that's been how long has it been 10 years 10 years so yeah could it be the the actual motors that could be interfering yeah, yeah electric motors and and the controlling circuits and uh you know uh, that those kind of things put out hash there's a point where there's just hash uh the digital circuits alone like there's the every power supply feeding a digital circuit is sucked down in a digital way and energy comes off of those and unless you uh completely design filtering that would not allow it and i think it part of the deal is when you're using that much energy i don't know how many kilowatts goes into a, an accelerated uh, tesla uh I'm, I'm guessing that they don't want to design the radio system to be it's just not important and i think that's am faces that too how are you going to maintain your importance and ever since i can remember uh the the smartest radio people over my career always said it's the content it's the content so if you get the content right and it was only on an am radio the people who really want that content are going to figure out how to get that content on an am radio the way you can distribute audio now is amazingly flexible so AM has to compete with that too, so it's very receivable. Like, like you get, you can get AM radio all over the place. But um, like I said, the quality here and an interference there. There's just all these things that are just like it's just hard. Yeah, I notice you have a solar panel behind you here. Yeah, what's this toy with? Why do you have a solar panel behind your desk? Well, I hide gifts behind there. That's oh. one thing I do, and I'm you know I I I've got it to do something with, which right now is undefined. <laughs> But I hope to use it at a tower site, uh, you know, an emergency kit or a charging a battery thing or... So so right now this is basically the world's most expensive yes. present hider. Yes, it's the it's one of the best I've ever had here too, so... And speaking of presents, I do have one present for you for this oh. Christmas. Oh my goodness. So go ahead and take a glance at what that is. Uh, what is this thing? Yeah, it's all right. Ho oh, oh. ho. So this is great. This is a book you had talked about somewhere yeah. in tweeting or whatever, all that stuff you do. Uh, and I saw it and it's like, I've got to get that book. Only guess what? I never got that book. <laughs> now I have it. This is, uh, I do recommend it. I just barely looking at it. I just recommend this to anyone who has an interest in any kind of hobbyist, computer, electronics, uh, AM transmitter repair, anything like that. Just, this is a great book. 
Merry Christmas. Yeah. And even though this video will most likely come out after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas to everybody watching. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs>